Hi there, welcome to Grain TV. I'm Kevin McNew. It's Thursday, April 7th. Corn, yet again, continuing to advance. Let's take a look at the Grain Edge trading platform and see where we closed. In Chicago, corn gained three and a half cents, getting above 360 for the first time since the USDA report. Beans losing three and a half, getting down around that support level of $9. And wheat continuing to sell off in the face of better weather, losing six cents a bushel. News out today, we had some news from Brazil. Their uh, government sees a smaller bean crop than what they saw in March. The bean estimate they came out with now is 98.9 million metric tons versus March's estimate, which was 101. That's still 98.9 is still within range of the 100 metric ton figure that USDA has been working with for quite some time. On the corn side of the equation, they did see a much higher corn estimate coming in at 84.6 versus last month at 83.5. Other news out, uh, we got a flash sale announcement from USDA. They said that US uh, sold 145,000 metric tons of corn to Japan for old crop delivery. And also Egypt was back in the market buying wheat and not surprisingly, French was the uh, lowest price uh, participant in that deal coming in at $192 a metric ton. Keep in mind that the U.S. price is around $30 a metric ton, more expensive than French wheat, and so we continue to sort of see uh, those kind of deals go to our competitors as we uh, are, are in a rather uncompetitive situation. Speaking of export sales, Thursday brought export sales numbers from USDA and we had somewhat of a mixed bag. Corn doing fairly well this week at 945,000 metric tons for old crop. Uh, and also a re reasonably good number for new crop, 175,000. Beans was much higher than expected for old crop coming in at 420,000 metric tons, but a very disappointing only 1.5 thousand metric tons sold in new crop delivery and wheat had net cancellations this week that uh, allowed us to reduce our, our total commitments for the year. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry, new crop sales were 159,000. So overall, corn was supportive, beans was mildly supportive, and wheat was just poor performing in the export situation. And let's take a look at sort of our export scorecard here and see where we stand versus last year and what USDA is forecasting in their latest WASDE reports that will be revised next week. But right now, uh, wheat is by far the biggest loser or the biggest uh, underperformer, if you will, uh, in terms of exports. We are running 17% behind last year. USDA is expecting only an 11% drop. So, you know, with very little uh, marketing year left in the wheat uh, arena, we're about only 10, 10 weeks away until we have the last of the 2015 crop year, you know, it seems likely that we may need to yet again ratchet down the wheat export sales because of their poor performance. Soybeans are doing right where we would expect based on USDA's projection of an 8% drop in corn. Has been improving of late, but still has some catching up to do at 14% below last year versus USDA looking at 11% drop. Let's switch gears and talk about uh, May soybeans. We've been seeing soybeans drift down ever since we started the, re the week around 920. That uh, upside momentum that we've been carrying for much of March seems to be running out of steam and we're getting at down around that 20-day moving average which happens to be at a nice round number around nine dollars a bushel. <clears throat> if you've been following our technical alerts that we put out every morning at Grain Hedge, you know we've been calling for soybeans to go lower this morning when Mark, the market it was trading around 906. We put out an alert suggesting it uh, would move to nine dollars. We didn't get there today, but we did close down around the low of the day around 903. If we look at today's trade action, it was pretty much a continuation of this downward trend that we started back on Sunday. Today's um, opening around 8.30 central time. You can saw we spiked up a little bit to try and test those highs. That upside resistance right now stands around 9.09, 9.10. We've been up there on several different occasions over the last few trade sessions, but unable to clear it. And uh, as a result, we've been drifting down. Today, we settled down around that 9.03 mark, which has been somewhat supportive 
but the, the long-term support here still stands around $9. I wouldn't be surprised to see us make a run at that before the weekend uh, is upon us. If you are interested in getting our Grain Hedge technical alerts every morning, come to our website, grainhedge.com, and sign up for our free demo. We send those to our trading clients uh, to help them make trade decisions throughout the day and, and find it a very valuable uh, tool for making those entry and exit points. That's all we got for today. Join us tomorrow for the weekly wrap up. Silver right now is at historically low levels. Starting with the financial crisis of 08, silver prices made an epic run from $10 an ounce to $50 an ounce in just three years. Silver looks poised to make another run higher. Here's why. Today's headlines show wide scale economic risk central banks using negative interest rates to stimulate economic growth, and the continued explosion of government debt around the world. All these factors are creating a flight to safety in physical metals. On the fundamental side, high mining costs limits new silver supplies, while demand for silver continues to expand through rapid use in cell phones, plasma TVs, and batteries. All these factors suggest taking action at today's prices before silver reaches $25 an ounce. Our precious metals desk at Grain Hedge can educate you about investing in physical metals. Their goal is to put the most amount of silver and gold in your hands at the least cost. To get started, contact Rodney at GrainHedge.com or by phone at 877-472-4607.